Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Joey Daddy's Garage. It is Monday, March 25th, 2024. That means, uh, let's see, 2530. Yeah, this will be the last, uh, I guess the last broadcast for March, right? Yeah. January, February, March. Yeah, probably last <laughs> broadcast for March. <laughs> Sorry, I had the math there for a second. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well. Um, it is weird weather we're having right now in Georgia. You know, uh, they did the whole Punxsutawney Phil thing or whatever the uh, general something they do down here in the south. And uh, we were supposed to have an early spring. And I guess we did. And then it was gone. And we went back to winter again. <laughs> it's been chilly. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've said it before. I don't like it being cold. I prefer to have warmer temperatures. I like to be able to have the garage door open, have air in here, have the sun shining, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, currently that's not the case. Uh, I hope that everybody has seen the last video and that was on the uh, Cobra Jet here behind me. And of course that was fitting, test fitting doors and fenders and trying to make sure everything is going to at least initially line up. The challenge is getting it off of the jig. That's gonna be the next step. And before I take it off the jig, I wanted to make sure that the doors would fit the car, at least as close as I could get them without doing any more modifications. And I think I, I proved that, and I'm very happy with uh, the results at this point. Yeah. There's a few tweaks that need to happen still, but for the most part, everything is where it should be. Um, I hope we have some new uh, viewers tonight. Uh, I know that there's been um, uh, some variance in who shows up and who doesn't, and that's fine. Currently, we're showing 22 viewing, and I hope, I hope there's more. I have some other stuff I want to talk about tonight. And, of course, everybody is open to join the conversation. Uh, I want everybody to uh, be, be a part of the program. And if you're new to my chat, well, it's uh, basically we talk about classic cars, as I've said before, uh, ranging from about 1955 up until... 79 maybe somewhere in that range and if you have a question by all means bring it up you know subject matter you want to bring up uh we're, we're we focus on combustion engines uh gas powered cars <laughs> that's going to be all we talk about we're not going to talk about anything else anymore it'll just be gas powered cars and uh i have some uh, some pictures and stuff i i want to show you and also uh some movie stuff relatable to the cars and I think it's kind of fun to see some of the stuff going uh, from previous movies. Uh, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. But let's see who's here tonight. Oh, and by the way, if you do participate, you get a bell. That's how it works. Yep. Little reward system I have. No charge for that. Um, so first in tonight, early, Rick Stevenson. Glad to hear Rick. And usually that's my... Rick is usually my first call for coffee, so get my sip of coffee and get this get the night started uh rick gain yes march isn't being kind let's enjoy some car talk yes let's do that um i don't know how it is up in new jersey but it's been just weird weather right now down here terry heathley good evening everyone and barry please hit the like and the thumbs up for barry thank you kindly yes thank you terry i got your email earlier today about the letter correction and I sent you an email back as well, so I hope you got that. If you didn't, let me know, and we'll go on from there. Uh, Dave Tyson, good evening all. Evening, Dave. First Dave sighting. Glad you're here. Rusty's Restoration, good evening all. And Barry, the Cobra Jet's coming together and looking great. Exciting to see you get it on your rotisserie. It saved my back for sure. Everything, Everyone give thumbs up. Yes. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I really want to do a, a decent video for... Um, that rotisserie because the uh, red line engineering or whatever it was um, they helped me out a little with the pricing and to do that I'm going to make a video that will help promote them as well so when I make the video there will be some links for their products and product line and that uh, particular rotisserie and they also ask me when I do that if I see something I don't like or whatever to point it out don't don't sugarcoat it and I'm well, that's how I normally do things anyway. But they want to make sure um, if they see some, or if there is something I don't like 
or a flaw or something, they want to know about it so they can correct it. And uh, I think it'll be a good video. At least I hope so. It's going to take a lot of effort, to be honest, because I have Henry Studebaker up on the lift and, of course, this on the jig. And it's going to be a lot of back and forth because I have to get Studebaker off of the lift to get the Mustang on the lift to get it off the jig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get, to get it on the rotisserie. <laughs> Lots to do. Hindsight 67, Roger. Greetings from next door. And no, March has not been kind on this side of the driveway either. Yeah. Yeah. And glad you're here, Roger. Roger had a um, uh, bad experience <laughs> this past week. And uh, if you're, if you live in, in, well, if you live outside of the city limits, um, or if you live out in the country somewhere, you probably have a well. We have a well, both of us. I have uh, these properties that we, we are living on were built by a family of people. I think it was four houses all built together. And they had put in a board well. If you know what a board well is, most of you should. It is a well that's about two and a half feet in diameter, maybe three feet, something like that and lined with uh, concrete sleeves and it's only usually 30 40 maybe 50 feet deep uh, i think that's the limitations on those and so we both had board wells and they both failed it happens so we've had a, a deep well for uh 20 23 years we've had a deep well 175 feet down and roger also has a deep well and apparently his pump decided it was time to quit. So on a rainy Friday, um, he had to have the well company come out and pull all that stuff back out. And so it was raining on them. It was raining on him. We, we, we went back and forth a little bit trying to figure out exactly what was going on. And um, I guess it ended up being the pump itself. So not a, not a happy Friday for Rudge. But I, I'm sure he has water now, so that makes him happy. Richard Vogel. Hello, Barry. Great to see you again. Thank you, Richard. I wish I could say the same. <laughs> I can't see anybody. <laughs> uh, the Robert, the Infernal Craftsman. Evening all. Been the best March in 10 plus years for us. It's actually rained this year, and it's well below normal temps. Nicer than the 96 degrees last month. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Glad you're here, Robert. Yeah, it's all part of the uh, polar shift thing and all that stuff. It's going to hit the planet and <laughs> cause chaos, right? Then, then all the people panicking about the solar eclipse coming in, in next month. Yeah. Uh, Faith Followers Customers. Cu yeah, customers. Faith Followers Customs. Good evening all from East Alabama. Like and subscribe. Yes. By all means, do that. Glad you're here. Nick Moss. Hello, Nick. Glad you're here. And we have Dwight Douglas from Indiana saying good evening. Good evening, Dwight. Mr. Mikey. Well, I guess he counted as 23 viewers is what he was saying. So <laughs> glad you're here. <laughs> uh, Tom Jones, good evening from Central Florida. Beautiful weather here for working on my 68 Mustang convertible. Oh, that's awesome. I, yeah, I could, I could deal with that. Steve Reed, hello Joe Daddy and everyone. Hope everyone's doing great and the Mach 1 coming along great. Such great work. Thank you, sir. Glad you're here. And we have Derek Pro. Hi, every hi Barry, everyone. Hope all is well. I'm sure you're happy the Mach 1 is nearly off the trailer. Looking awesome. Thank you, sir. Dave Britton. That's our second Dave sighting. Glad you're here, Dave. Alright. Terry Keithley. Sometimes we talk about food like liver and onions. Yummy. Yes. Yes. Don't get me started. Because I'm already hungry. I started off hungry. Yeah. Unfortunately. But I will say my wife has uh, tortellini soup made. And it was, it was made a couple days ago. And there's leftovers, which are right up my alley. So, yeah. We'll get there. Derek Pro. Happy Easter, everyone. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Some do. Some don't. Some or can't say this or that. But anyway, have a great week weekend with the family guys yes thank you Derek Rick Gain that must have been annoying to have the deal with not being able to get water on a rainy day sorry to hear about Roger's difficulties yeah it was uh yeah and you know the, the really fun part I guess was um 
his driveway is on way on that side and my driveway is on this side so they had to come into my driveway which is fine and access his well which is fine with me it doesn't you know we've got a pretty good understanding that sometimes you have to drive on each other's property <laughs> so not a big deal Derek says uh, did you say uh, did you say to Roger oh well then <laughs> yeah Robert, my well pump is hanging by the wires. Pipe came off the fitting at the wellhead. Have made tools to grab the pipe so that will either be easy or lots of four-letter words. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Car Guy Troy, hello all. Checking in from Utah. We've had all four seasons here today. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. All in eight hours back to spring at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just started off chilly today. I mean, it was... And it was. It seemed like it was... Um, I don't know. It was pretty overcast. So it was like the sun came up and we couldn't see it kind of thing. It was like, why is it so dark? James. Hello, all. Hello, James. Glad you're here. Uh, Denny Alvey, good evening, Barry. Hello from Paducah, Kentucky. Hello, Denny. Isn't that where Steve Reed is from? Are you both from Paducah? Is that right? Or am I confused? Let me know. Um, Dawn's Manufactory. Good evening, folks from Rainy PDX. Betsy might be done. Don't know what to do with myself. Uh oh. Well, you're welcome to come here, Dawn, and hang out for a couple weeks. <laughs> Glad you're here, Dawn. Art Man. Good evening from Minneapolis. Not enjoying the weather the past 24 hours. Yeah, it's not been not very good at all. Glad you're here, Art. Rick Gain, I saw in the video, we all know Toby Keith recently passed away. His favorite car in his collection was his 69 428 Cobra Jet Mach 1. That's, well, that's interesting. I didn't know he had one of those. That's cool. Dave Conville. That's our third sighting, right? Glad to hear, Dave. Steve Reed, I got a deep well, 45 foot deep, and the well pump went out two months ago. My grandfather put it in at 19, in 1947. And the water is like spring water. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, a, a deep well here in Georgia is like uh, over 150 feet. And it's just a small pipe, you know, like a six-inch pipe. And then they put, uh, one, I guess, one-inch PVC down inside of it with the pump hanging off the bottom. So, yeah, and that's good. Nick, if your quarter window seems correct in the up position... But in the down position is riding hard on the inner quarter. What would you try adjusting? Just figure out my one-piece glass and notice that adjusting. I basically won't be able to get the interior panels in if I want to roll the quarter windows down. Ooh, uh, that's that's a good question. Now I've done a video on on the quarter install. Um, is riding hard on the inner quarter. What would you try adjusting? Well, that's, you know, I, that's probably something I can't just put out, you know, in front of you right now. Um, there's only so many ways that can be moved. And if you've got, if it's rubbing on the quarter, inner quarter, so the base is coming inside, right? And the top is out. So you, you almost have to, like, shift the whole thing over. I, I, it's hard to explain that. It really is. Um, I wish I had an easy way to. But I did make a video on it. Whether that helps you or not, I don't know. But um, uh, that's a tough question to answer, Nick. Anthony Carver, my mom made the best liver and onions ever. People that said they hated liver and onions would say that, would say, what's that smell? And ended up loving them. Yeah. Ah, let's not get started. I am already stomach growling. <sighs> Glad you're here, <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> Robert, my well is 100 feet, and I have pulled the pump up by hand, but not this time. Ooh, that's a that's a big pull. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's gonna be heavy. Um, Nick, uh, oh sorry, I basically yeah we talked about that. Sorry, Nick. Colin, hey gang, hope all's well. Finally got my wiring harness for my 66 coupe. Big project coming up. All right, that's good. Anthony Carver, I lived in Paducah, loved it there. Okay. 
Uh, Dawn, I am headed your way eventually. Okay, well, just let me know when. <laughs> let me know when. Dave Britton, uh, during COVID, my well collapsed, and I could not get anyone to bore another, so I entered, so I rented a backhoe and did it myself. Well, okay. That's, that's good. <laughs> that's a tough thing to do. Uh, uh, Roger, my pump was 200 feet down. Yes, that's, that's a deep well. Uh, Colin, my deep well is 150 feet down. Okay. Robert, wells for most houses here now are 250 feet and, or, and deeper. Uh, now I'm lucky as I'm near the, near the lake and in an area with few wells to draw from the same area. Okay. Well, I know that um, where we're at, I don't know what we're what we're tapped into. I don't know. All I know is when they had we had the well put in, um, they they ran it, and basically they told me this is we have enough water here to feed the whole county. So I don't know what I know. I don't know what the words what what's under there. I don't know, but that's what they that's what they were telling us. Richard, which rotisserie did you purchase, and how much did it set you back? Um, let me see if I have a picture of that rotisserie because it's red line. Here you go. Um, this is at red line. Let me, I got to pull it on your comment here quick. See if it'll show it. Yeah. Hold on. It's the red line ROT 3000 dash LD. And I think, uh, the list price they had them on sale. It was like twelve hundred dollars, I think. So that, that's probably what what it would run you. And I know they do free shipping if you have a place to ship it to. Like they won't ship it directly to a residence, but if they ship it to like a a dock somewhere, um, they'll 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 cover the shipping. But I don't know exactly, you know, what the stipulations are. I know that. Because I, I inquired about that, and I think it was the, it was free if they had a business to ship it to. So um, I had a, I'll probably I'll be posting a link on all that stuff whenever I make the video for that. Uh, let's see. Nick, I watched the video of yours. Okay. I don't, I don't know if I gave you enough answers or not, but uh, Don says you can twist the quarter glass track via the lower adjustment if needed. So that's, there's an answer for you. Will Smith, important question. I'm stripping my Mustang with a 36 grit Eastwood sander. Should I sand it with 80 before primer? Should I do epoxy or DTM high build? Thanks, you're the man. Okay, uh, good question, Will. Glad you're here. Um, if, okay, if you're stripping it with 36, that's pretty aggressive, but I understand, uh, I would probably, uh, I don't know if 80 grit is the answer. 80 grit is still pretty rough. And what I've done before is I've stripped something down and then I've hit it with 180 just to smooth it, make it a little smoother. Now you could do 80. It's not going to, it's not going to hurt. Um, cause it's, it's, it's metal at that point. You're not. You're not scratching up paint. So I would go out with 80. And for me, I would probably do uh, epoxy. No, I wouldn't. You don't want to use high build first. Unless the DTM is something I don't know, understand. But epoxy is what you want to do. And usually there's a window of time based on uh, manufacturer. Say, for instance, PPG's uh, epoxy has a four-day window to recoat. So like if you sprayed the epoxy and you waited... 24 hours, let's say, and then sprayed your high build on top of that, you don't have to really do any more prep work. But if you um, spray it and just let it sit, it's going to get hard and you'll have to scuff everything again to spray the high build on it. Hope that, I hope it makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I would, 80, 80 would work. You know, I don't know how much body work needs to be done. That may be a good thing, you know, depending on how, what condition of everything is. But um, yeah. That's my answer. James says, Nick, the adjustment is at the bottom of the window track at brackets bolted to the rocker panel. And it says, you're supposed to have a pack of biscuits with that coffee berry. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Thank you, Derek. <laughs> you mean cookies. We call them cookies. <laughs> yeah. But you're right. That would be fantastic. So, um, yeah, James, like James was saying, the adjustment at the bottom of the track. And then Nick, it's kind of like I need to shift everything to the outside quarter and maybe give it a little tilt, but I don't know how to get more out of the top adjustment. I'll get it sorted, I'm sure. Yeah, you'll, you'll figure it out. Just keep turning bolts until something. You know, and I've had this many times where, and I know you don't want to do this. You don't want to take it out and put it in all that stuff over and over again. I can take a fender, a hood, a door, take it off, put it back on, and it fits completely different. Take it off, put it back on, and it fits completely different. Take it off, put it back on, and it fits perfect. Take it off again, put it on, it's wrong. It's it's weird, I don't know. You think that there's there's some sort of magic to it at some point where, hey, it fits perfect, leave it alone. And then you come back the next day and it's like, you move something and it's it's all wrong again. But I know you don't want to do that with the uh, uh, you know, taking a window out. That's for sure. Tim Miller, my 70 Mustang door hinges need bushed and pin kit. Okay. That's that's not a hard task. I have I don't have any videos on the 70, but I do have videos on a 65 or 66 and 68, I think, or 67. Uh, no. One of the two. I did door hinges for somebody one time. Um, or you can send them to me and I'll do them. I'll, I'll do them. But it's not it's not, not that hard to do. So the kits are out there. I don't know. If, I don't know if you... Had a, well, I'll give you a bell anyway. <laughs> I don't know if I gave you a bell before. Bob Shoemaker, evening all. Too cold for grandson soccer, so made it here. Okay. Yeah, my grandson's been playing hockey, like rollerblade hockey. And so he does that on Fridays. So that's that's uh, that's always been fun. Uh, Dave Britton, I can't run run my well dry, and it, it is only 27 feet. Wow, that's that's really good. That's really good. Uh, Rick Ann, how about California, California wanting to bill you for the water you take out of the ground? Yeah. Yeah. And they're also talking about billing people. How are they saying it? There was something about the renewable energy stuff that they were talking about solar panels and all that stuff. And then uh, it, it uh, you know, I don't want to go down that road because it was it was a mess from what I what I heard about it. But yeah, they want to bill you for everything. Derek, do your uh, down pipes from the house get plumbed into a stormwater infrastructure, or does it just run into the ground onto the ground? Um, do the down pipes from your house? I'm I'm not sure what that means exactly. You talking about the like rain gutters? Um, if that's what if that's what you're asking, like the gutters on the house, well, they just go to the ground. There is no nothing in between. Um, you know, of course we are we're on a well. I mean, a septic tank. So any you know all that stuff goes into the septic tank. And then throughout the front yard in a, in the the piping system out there, but um, no, we don't have any kind of storm water stuff going on. No. Uh, Barry Gidry, I'm guessing. I don't. Know, I'm not sure if I said that right. Hi Barry, I have a '66 uh, fastback, and my I'm at my wits' end. Would like to send it to you, like your work. I sent you an email, pictures. Okay. Uh, okay to that. I'm not saying, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> but uh, you definitely did send me some pictures. Okay. Uh, do you mind if I share some of these? I'll ask you that first. Before I post those, uh, let me know if you don't want me to share those. <laughs> um, and also, I have some other pictures that I want to post um and, and it relates to we were talking about uh um a little bit about movies and i watched a couple of different movies this uh last two weeks on tubi television 
And um, one of those movies, I don't think I talked about this last week. I don't think I did. One of these movies had this car in it. So the quick question is, can you name that movie? That's that's the first the first question. Can you name that movie? Um, that car had it went back and forth from this shape to this shape <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> so that's that's the first first one I want to. I'm just going to ask you to uh, name that movie if you can. Um, whoops. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute as well. I, I, it just, it sometimes you you movies um, that were made in the in the seventies are just so bad that you like have to watch them just because. And this was one of those movies. I'm trying to get some other pictures that I have. Um, oh, that's not it. How did I, what did I mess up here? Hold on a minute. But the, some of these movies were just so, so poorly made um, that yeah, you, you just can't help yourself. So I have, I have a couple more pictures. All right. So let me pull that one back down. So think about that for a minute. And uh, Okay, so Barry says I can show the pictures of his car. Um, so here you go. Ready? So that is a 66 Fastback. Or pieces of a 66 Fastback. Yeah. Yeah, I can see where you need some help. <laughs> I can see where you need some help on that. Man. That that that's that's quite the project. Yeah, that's quite the project. So, um, let's go back to Yeah. He says what's left of it. Yeah. <laughs> Robert says, nice cutaway of a Mustang. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. So let me get back up here a minute. Uh, hold on. I got to get caught up on my... Well, now it shifted on me. Hold on. The whole thing just scrolled way too fast. Okay, so we got Michael Pagliarini checking in. Good evening, all late to the party. Glad you're here. Terry says, or gobs. Yummy. Yes, definitely gobs. Anthony Carver, my channel will be must, must stang in garage. I don't plan at all on big time just going to show no matter what. How about your health? Just don't give up. It will be a 68 coupe to fastback conversion. Okay. You know, the challenge is taking a fastback and turning it into a coupe. Everybody's doing the fastback conversion. Do it the other way. That'll mess with people. <laughs> Nick, I recommend the Mustang Steve. Greasable hinges. Door closes like butter. Okay. Thank you, Nick. They've written the shipping weight of a 69 Dynacorn body is 1,700 pounds, including crate. Curious what your Mustang body would weigh. Uh, I have no idea. I have no idea. No way to tell. Uh, Dawn says, Tim, I posted an extensive door hinge video. So there you go. There's a door hinge video. And Derek was talking about, yes, the rain gutters. Okay. Simone checking in. Hi, Barry and chat. Earlier than usual tonight. Good. Glad you're here, Simone. Oh, and Michael gets a bell, too. Sorry. All right, so we showed the pictures of the cutaway Mustang for Barry. 
Uh, James Mothers, I sent my 67 original AM radio to get restored and converted the AM FM stereo with built-in amp. Bluetooth connection and USB inputs. It's going to be 10 months. It's been 10 months. Still not back. So frustrating. Yeah, I could see that. Sure. Rick Stevenson got the answer right. Cannonball. Yes. Not Cannonball Run. Anthony Carver says Cannonball Run. It was not Cannonball Run. It was Cannonball. Um, I, I have... Let me see here. If I can get... Um, there was one more picture that I thought I sent myself. Let me see if I can find it. Maybe I only sent... Maybe I only sent... Oh, I did send it. Where's it at? Hold on a second. Because you got to have you got to have the other photo that goes with it. Um, let me pull this one up. Because that movie... Uh, it was so bad. The acting was terrible. The driving scenes were the highlight, of course. Uh, but this is a kind of a foretelling another movie. Yeah. So there's the beat up. And you know that, that charger? That thing went from being straight to beat up to straight to beat up to straight to exploded. <laughs> and... There was a scene in that movie towards the end. Basically, they shoot somebody, and the guy crashes the car. He's dead, whatever. And I don't know what they were thinking. It was like on a almost like a desolate section of highway, and they did this scene, and they flipped the Firebird. Next thing you know, it's one car after another, after another, after another, after another, just crashing into this pile. It's like a... You know, you see those pictures of pileups where it's uh, ice and it's all snowy and they can't stop and they just keep crashing and cause all kinds of chaos, right? Or a scene where it's all or a, like legitimately fogged, fog, all foggy and these cars going too fast, crashing into each other. That's exactly what this was, except it was crystal clear, blue skies, and they just kept piling up, piling up, piling up cars. It was probably 30 cars piled up in that. And there were explosions like propane gas bombs blowing up it was so over the top and i'm like where did all these cars come from and most of these cars were just junkers you know they it's like they had this inventory of junk and they just wanted to smash everything and it was it was just it was crazy <laughs> um all right what 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 hold on Oh, Nick says, yeah, that car was in, is, that sucker's in 4x4 four four mode. Yeah. Yeah, they did some jumps with that car, and the hood went, woo, <laughs> smashed. <laughs> Doyle Walker, hello, hey, all, how is everyone? Glad to hear Doyle. Simone had asked, if it was the original Gone in 60 Seconds? Nope. Nope. It was Cannonball. And again, not Cannonball Run. That was, a, to me, a better movie than can than this one. Uh, Car Guy Troy Nick, I like Mustang Steve's stuff. I snagged a set of his caliper brackets to put late model Mustang GT brakes on a 66 I had. Good kit. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, Derek says, okay, so the water sinks into the ground, hence you're pumping underground water once it's filtered down. It's law here to have connected to infrastructure. Yeah, not here. Not here. I mean, uh, rainwater and stuff just goes into the ground. And then your septic tank has to filter, let's say, kind of, you know how that works. But the water makes it out, like, towards the, the water itself makes it out to the front yard. Uh, Simone says, I don't remember seeing that car in Cannonball Run. Yeah, it was not in Cannonball Run. It was in Cannonball, 1974. Cannonball Run came out some, like, 78 or something like that, 80. Something to that effect. Derek, very overwhelming when you get to that stage of the build. Best of luck, Barry. Talking to you, Barry, not me, Barry. <laughs> CJ Hoyt, that should be easy to fix on that fastback. Okay. <laughs> Glad you're here. Uh, Barry says, it would, it would be like the Brooklyn Pony. Yeah, sort of. 
sort of. The challenge would be um, to have, I don't know what your, what the plan is overall. I mean, as far as I know you want to build the car back, but pieces and parts, what's available, what you need, and what you don't have, and all that sort of thing. Anthony Carver, David Carradine, Kung Fu, yes. And they put in Kung Fu fight scenes in this, in this uh, movie as well. Very, very bad fight scenes. It was just... It was just terrible. Jefferson Miller, very glad to see you live. I'm missing the streams, but I always watch the recordings. Okay. Glad you're here. Um, Rick, Barry, since it was your idea to turn your, your Mach 1 into a coupe. Yeah, well, not, not a 69. Maybe a 67. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steve Reed, uh... Uh, I guess on bare metal, do you bond some places? Uh, wait a minute. Uh, let me try to read that. On bare metal, do you... I don't know what you're asking. I can't understand what that says. Do you bond some places, other car first, or after you prime it? Uh, you're talking about bondo? Do you, I guess, use bondo? Ah, there we go. Um, I don't use bondo. I, I hate to say Bondo. I, I, do, I do not use Bondo. Bondo is just garbage. Um, I use Rage Ultra. Uh, you get what you pay for with body filler. And I won't use Bondo for, on anything. But uh, you can use Rage directly to bare metal. And if it was a panel, let's say like in the collision industry for sure, uh, if the panel was damaged and the paint was all good, you can scuff that paint and put, uh, you know, body filler on top of that. Um, Any more, what I try to do is put epoxy down for everything and then start on top of that. Uh, it just makes it easier to seal everything up. So I would put epoxy on and then body filler. But it it can go to bare metal. And a lot of people, there's they'll debate you on this. They'll say, well, it's... Uh, it has to go to bare metal, and that's not that's not true. Um, once you get the, the epoxy on there, and I'll let the epoxy cure. Like, I won't just put it on and start putting filler on the next day. It's got to be, I'll let it cure up for probably at least a week, and then re-scuff it, and then start adding filler. So, that's what I do. Good question. Robert, Cannonball is really slow for the first half. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Simone, Death Race was awful too. Yes. <laughs> it was a terrible movie. <laughs> I can't argue that. <laughs> uh, Stephen Franks. Welcome, Steve. Have you worked on a 71 and 73? Is it is it correct? Floor, floors and trunk pans are the same. I did some work on a 70... Mm, I think a 73 convertible. That's the only generation or only one I've worked on of those cars. As far as the floor pans and all that stuff, uh, they're not the same as earlier cars. I can tell you that. I don't know if they're the same. I'm assuming they're the same 71 to 73. I assume those are the same pans. Um, but, yeah, I don't have really any experience with those cars beyond a little bit of work that I did on a convertible. So. I don't know what's going on with my light. My light's acting weird, or something's acting weird. Robert, I agree with Simone 100%. And she says, hi, Robert. Okay. Um, James, Stephen, 1965-1970, use same base platform, 71 to 73, completely different. Yes. That is, that's what I would say as well. I agree with that 100%. Derek, after all that wrecking, there are still part of you that wants to save them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Simone says, I'd never heard of Cannonball. Interesting. Yes, it's it's really bad. Just just so you know. And it, there was another movie that I started to watch. Um, <laughs> I couldn't. I had to stop. Because it was on, um, again, on Tubi. It was made in like 19, I don't know, 74 or 5 or something like that. And it was called... Super van. 
And you talk about a movie that was slow to start. It was just dragging on in the beginning. They had a scene where they accidentally backed a van into a car crusher. And then a motorcycle accidentally crashed into the car crusher as well. I watched about 10 minutes of it and I had to stop. So I might try to watch more of it later. But it was just just, just really, really, really bad. Dave Britton, first time I've heard of Mustang Steve. Interesting sight. I'll, have to, I'll check it out. And Barry says, I have all the sheet metal. Okay. Well, when I'm, when I'm seeing, uh, based on the pictures, you know, when you say all the sheet metal, I, I'm looking like, do you have the sides, like the complete assemblies? Um, you know, that's like what I did with the uh, Mach 1 behind me. Because there's, there's a lot that needs to be replaced there. Um, uh, let's see, Robert, the Mustang, Steve stuff is very good and he isn't too far from me. I plan to get his caliper brackets kit as well. The door hinges I can make greasable. There you go. Cargo Troy, have you seen Death Proof with Kurt Russell? I couldn't get into it. I, I did see, um, I see, I've seen parts of that movie. Parts of it. So now you got me interested in, I'll have to go watch, go watch that again. <laughs> And see if I can get something out of it. Uh, Tim Miller, the the Jason White Texan Mustang Restore is step by step bare steel, and he put EPX ninety black put on let flash set next put high build primer over it given the time limits next paint. Yep. Yeah, and that's that's all good as far as if you don't have to do any kind of body work. But you're right, yeah. Bare metal, go to epoxy, you can go to primer. Um, and then, you know, if, if he's ready to go to paint, that's great. But, yeah. James, I purchased Mustang Steve's steering column bearing to support the steering shaft after I converted to Borgeson's steering system on my 67. Okay. Simone and I have Death Proof on DVD. Very different movie. Yeah, I'm sure. And Barry says he does have the sides for the Fastback. Uh, Doyle, I tried to watch Hot Rod just because of 69 Cutlass like mine. Ugliest color combo ever. Couldn't finish, couldn't finish it. Acting was typical early 70s horrible. Now, see, I don't, I don't know about that movie. Because uh, I was thinking when I, you said Hot Rod, I was thinking of that that movie they made in the two thousands with one of the SNL guys who uh, was like jumping his moped or something. Um, so I don't know about that one, but yeah, there was a lot of really bad movies made back then. Um, Nick, y'all don't know about Mustang Steve. Man, I feel like I I just hurt y'all's wallets. <laughs> James, wasn't Kurt Russell yeah, Snake Pliskin? Yes. Pliskin, yes. In Escape from New York. Yes, he was. In both of them. In both of them. There were two of those. Two of those movies. Jefferson, Barry, my body mechanic, has bridged the junction between rear quarter and roof with body filler. Um was done by Ford differently, if I recall. Any concern with the paint and cracking the filler obviously goes from rear window to driver glass. Um, okay, so... I <laughs> said Nick. Um, has bridged the junction between the quarter... Okay, so... I don't know if you're talking about... A, I don't remember if you're talking about a, a Cooper Fastback. Either way... Originally, they would have been uh, welded and leaded. They would have had lead in, the, in across that seam. I don't know what's been done to it. Um, I don't know what the plan is uh, overall. Let's say, like, initially, this car, Charles was building it to, he wanted to try to race it or make it raceable, let's say. So he was concerned with stuff like that. And, um, okay, so a 69 Fastback. 
Now, what I'm what I have done is I have spot welded the quarter to the inner structure, ground that metal down, and then spot welded the roof to the quarter. The next thing I will do is I'm going to weld the entire edge of the quarter or the roof to the quarter as well. Charles wanted me to put weld in metal strips on that, and I don't know that I'm going to do that. Once I weld that flange, it's not going anywhere. I know that much. Um, but what I have done in the past is use uh, short strand fiberglass and just to bridge that gap. It's not really super thick, I mean like deep in there, um, but I've used short strand fiberglass. I don't use straight body filler. Like I, I don't, I just haven't. I've always used short, short strand fiberglass to build a base in there and then go back over it with uh, regular filler. So I don't know what he's used, but um, it's that's what I've been doing. And James, yeah, Snake Pliskin, yes. Window to driver's glass, okay. And Pilskin, not pigskin, yeah. <laughs> Snake Pliskin, yeah, okay. Barry says, I'm going to send you my number. I can fill you in more, okay. Uh, Nick says, I want to see a movie with Snake Pigskin. <laughs> no, though. <laughs> okay, now you have to come up with a script for that, Nick. <laughs> What's the plot line, Nick? <laughs> Robert, the factory used lead because it is very fast to do in the assembly line versus any kind of filler. That, that's probably very true, yeah, because it cure. It's like as soon as it cools off, it's there. Uh, Dwight, the original Gone in sixty seconds was pretty lame, except for all the cops crashing into each other. Yeah, the the cool part about Gone in sixty seconds was. They, they used one car for the whole thing, and they didn't fix it. Like they did, maybe they probably fixed it to make it, you know, keep it drivable. But it didn't go back and forth between being wrecked and shiny and wrecked and shiny and wrecked and shiny. It got like wrecked, 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 wrecked. Oh, you know, got rid of it. That was the cool part about that. And, of course, the way they built that car was incredible, too, because it, it really had a full roll cage in it. Uh, it, was, it was overbuilt. And that car still exists and is drivable today which is again pretty cool but yeah uh, i it was it wasn't it was a low budget movie and i'll tell you this i watched the junk man as well with him terrible just really 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 bad don't even bother watching that movie uh steve reed okay thanks and the car will be all bare metal yep you're welcome James, Nick, when you watch a pigskin movie, nonstop corn, <laughs> but pork rinds only. <laughs> he says autocorrect is killing me. <laughs> Smalls. <laughs> okay. Let's get past that. <laughs> Derek, I can still remember the movie Duel. With the orange Chrysler and the truck, still don't get the storyline, and gave me nightmares. Hence, still don't like trucks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Anthony Hot Rod was also Rebel of the Road. Oh, uh, see, no, I haven't, I haven't seen that one. Uh, Dave says Nick makes me laugh. Yep. Donnie Williams, greetings, greetings, Donnie. Glad you're here. Simone says, pigskin, now I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I like pork skins. They're good. I do. Uh, Stephen Franks, have you or anyone have rollerized spring perches? Upper A-arms, radius struts, seems it would handle better or, or for uh, or race setup. Um, I have not. I have a friend who has done those, have put in the, you know, that, se that setup. Um, now I will say I have a set of that Charles had bought all that stuff um, uh, Chris Alston Total Control whatever Control Arms all that stuff and we're not going to use them we're going to go back to um, the stock items and I've been trying to sell that stuff for for his wife so 
we have all I have all that stuff. Control arms, um, the uh, with the bearings and whatever, all that stuff. Now I don't know if anybody's interested in it or not, but send me an email if you are. But I have not used them myself. Anthony says super fan is okay if you fast forward through it. Yeah, I started skipping over stuff when I was trying to watch it. James Mother's Derek uh, storyline is Road Rage Gone Wrong. Oh, talking about the uh, movie Duel. Yeah. Robert says he sent me some pics. Let me see. Um, if I can download those. It says, uh, sent some pics. Okay, hold on. Takes me a second to, to get this stuff. And then I have to have room for it in my file. It's coming. I swear it's coming. That was. Okay. So these, he's saying sent pics. This is with the, is that short strand? Joint filled with filler and after smoothing it out. Yep. Now was that regular filler or was that some short strand fiberglass stuff? We need to know that too. Uh, Derek says, oh yes, James, get that part of it, but... Yeah, really gone wrong. It's like that here on the roads today. Scary stuff. It's like that everywhere. It's like that everywhere. We had an incident um, just just because you brought it up. Um, you see these videos of crazy car chases, you know, people crashing or cops doing their job and trying to stop criminals and all these different things. We had one in our little town. And it was some somebody from the north side of Atlanta stolen a car, came down to our town, and they uh, the the video the cops shared a video of it. This this guy was in a little Honda Civic, whatever, and they identified that it was a stolen car. So they turned their lights and siren on, and this guy took off. And he he didn't I don't think he knew where he was going. He ended up in a residential neighborhood. And, you know, the cops are trying to block him off completely. And he's cutting back through people's yards. And he ends up coming out of that neighborhood at a stop sign and crashes into somebody at the, at the stop sign. And they pull him out of the car. And it's a 14-year-old kid with, with a handgun. 14-year-old kid. Like, what? So this 14-year-old kid stole his car from like 50 miles away and brought it down to our little town. And ends up, it was, uh it's crazy. Just crazy. Simone, I have a replacement wing fender for the Katina. Needs repairs, though. Well, that's, I'm glad you have one. Ed, rollerized spring purchases are great. I use them on all less noise. Thank you, Ed. Here you go. Car guy short. How about the movie The Car? Old 70s horror movie. The car is a villain. Blackout Lincoln, maybe. Yeah, it was some sort of a Lincoln that they customized the front end on it. And you know what? There's another one called The Wraith. Yeah. Great name for a movie. W-R-A-I-T-H. Not not Wraith. <laughs> like <laughs> The Wraith. <laughs> With um, uh, Charlie Sheen. I think it was Charlie Sheen was the the driver of, of that car. And it was some sort of futuristic uh, thing as well. The car loved that movie. Yeah. That was it was it was an interesting movie. Brian, roller uh, roller spring purchase, etc. seem to be overpriced unless you really plan on road racing, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. I get that. Robert, it's the fiber-filled stuff. I am not good at body work. I have a hard time feeling the high and low spots. Well, I, I, I know I can understand that, and it's it's a learned thing. It really is. Um, yeah, 
It, it, you have to learn how to, how to get that sensation. A lot of times I'll even use, I've said it before, I'll, I'll take like a, uh, a cloth and run, put it between the metal and my finger or my hand and run it over it or even a paper towel. And that'll actually help highlight those flaws. Uh, Derek Pro, people going bonkers, especially bad for new young drivers. Yeah. Robert says, was the Wraith an alien-based thing where the guy was actually an alien? Uh, you know, I don't know. I know that um, it had something to do with Charlie Sheen dying and then coming back as this um, evil car. I think is what, what the premise was, but I don't I don't know for sure. It was, it was a bizarre kind of movie. It was fun to watch. I mean, it was... Um, you know, as, as most of them are. You know, the the one, the other one that comes to mind <laughs> when we talk about these cheesy movies uh, was one called uh, Killdozer. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen Killdozer, but um, Killdozer was the movie that gave me nightmares. That was about a possessed bulldozer. And... Um, I can still picture these scenes and basically this, how can you not outrun a, a killdozer, right? But people were not able to outrun this thing. And one of the things that, that, uh, somebody did to try to escape, they crawled into a piece of, uh, pipe, like a drainage pipe and they, they're trying to hide in there. And I'll never forget this thing that, that killdozer came and ran over that pipe and flattened it and i was like i'm never crawling inside a pipe ever <laughs> ever <laughs> simone almost been it now i'm off to sleep good night everyone good night simone car guy troy uh, we keep having people drive the wrong way on the freeway somehow seems like one a week i would think you'd have to try to do that but apparently not on the news quite a bit that's scary Roger says goodnight to Simone. Uh, James, we got we get rogue horses and cows on seventy five here in North Georgia. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dave Britton Killdozer had a Clint had Clint Walker in it, and I thought it was a it was great back in the day. Yeah, it well, it just that was terrifying. Simone says, good night. Okay. Faith followers, customs, blue shop towels for checking filler work great. Yes. That, that is a good thing. Uh, Terry Keithley, good body men are retired safe crackers. LOL. It's all in the touch. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Derek Pro, I think you would like the classic Australian movie running on empty. It features a beautiful 57 Chevy two-door and iconic X... YGT HO Phase 3 Falcon. Look it up. I'm sure you'll like it. Uh, I don't know. I may have seen... Well, I'm going to say I might have seen that movie, but I uh, I know I've seen a, an Australian movie or had Australian cars in it. But it's been a while. So maybe that was. Uh, Stephen Frank's movie theme. Hope John's John Wick's next movie highlights a Mustang again. Yeah, that would be great. Um... I don't know that that's going to be the case. And here's a funny, um, just uh, some funny uh, thoughts here. I, and I only bring this up because we're talking about movies. But if you've ever seen, um, like one of my favorite movies is The Matrix. I, I like that movie. I've always, if it comes on, I want to watch it. I just, I get a kick out of it. Um and if you've if you followed along with that whole the whole matrix storyline uh of course the idea is that neo is the hero and he you know, keeps coming back for the next movie and the next movie and the the guy in charge is uh you know trying to stop him and all these different things and there's a there's a fan theory going on that i, I really like and it says that uh um uh, the the guy in charge whatever whatever the creator was created the John Wick character so that Neo could be fighting other bad guys and keep him busy 
So that's that's the fan theory is that John Wick is actually Neo, and he doesn't know it. <laughs> I, I I like that theory. I think it's it's a fun way to look at it. Uh, Jefferson just sent an email pic of finished quarters. Wonder if any additional thoughts. Okay, I just downloaded those. So let me pull down your uh, your comment. It's, and I, all I can see right now, these aren't very big on my screen, so I'm I'm just just posting them, um, so that we can see what's going on. I don't look. I mean, I can't say it's if it's good or not. I mean, it looks good. Um, those are NPD quarters by the looks of it. But it's progress. I, I I'd have to look at those pictures harder with on my uh, uh, computer to get a better better idea of what I'm looking at. Cargo Troy, Maximum Overdrive, Stephen King movie, semi with a goblin face on the front. Wouldn't recommend it. It was a, it was a cheesy movie, but it was it was still fun. It, it, we you knew it was going to be just a cheesy movie from the beginning, but. It, it was entertaining, I'll say that. The only good thing about it is it has ACDC songs. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, Robert, I just don't have any... I don't have very sensitive feeling in my fingertips. One finger, I barely feel anything, but that was my fault. I removed a joint and some of the nerves with a woodworking tool. Yeah, that's, that's counterproductive. Don't do that. Uh, Dave, if I remember correctly, when Kildos went over the pipe, it also put down the ripping hooks was an ooh moment yeah i don't remember all i all i know is i was terrified when it ran over that pipe it was it was really bad dawn love your junkyard story about the timing set yeah i think i've i don't i i i thought maybe i shared that before but i don't know for for sure um dawn had uh in his latest video i think it was one of the latest videos he was talking about having a, a noise a random um kind of noise in his car and he kept trying to figure it out and he was removing replaced the uh uh water pump and and just trying to figure out what's what's making the noise and i think he did a water pump like three times still had the noise and he found that the timing set was um rubbing or well it was worn out too early and i think it was probably touching the inside of the uh um timing cover and so one of the things that came to mind when i saw that was i uh, when i was in high school i had my 72 chevy short bed or long bed that i drove and i think i have a, i think i still have a picture of that here somewhere I think maybe maybe not but I had my 72 Chevy and I had oh uh, yeah there it is so I had my 72 Chevy and I had my 70 Mustang was behind it that was when I turned into a 69 but that 72 Chevy had a 305 in it or no 307 sorry I was wrong I said 305 to dawn a 307 and um the uh timing chain was a nylon or timing gear set was not the nylon gear thing and it had worn out so bad that it actually cut a slot in the timing cover but it kept on running it the timing never seemed to be bad it just kept on running but it slung that chain over and cut through the timing cover and i went up in the junkyard and i found a pile of old uh, engines just that we had pulled out of cars that were being crushed and um I dug around and found a, a 283 out of uh, something in the 60s. Pulled the timing cover off, and there was a perfect set of timing gears in there that were original. And back then, they were like bulletproof. Took those out, and I stuck them in my truck. Put the timing cover on, the good timing cover. And I, was, I was good to go. <laughs> the things you do at the junkyard. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Isaac. Hi, Isaac. Talk about goofy movies, Maximum Overdrive. I think it was Stephen King, but hello all, and Barry late to the party, Southwest Florida. Glad you're here. 
Uh, Nick, that's my favorite Emilio film. Oh, wait a minute. Not Repo Man? You gotta have Repo Man in there somewhere. Yeah. Repo Man. Who can forget that? All right, James says, Barry, just sent you pictures of my convertible. Finally, all panels here, but it's still an exploded car. Now, I've only downloaded two of those pics, but I think that covers it pretty well. So there's a tail panel, front balance, looks like some fenders. Fenders, yeah. Wheelhouses, I know in the other shot there was a hood. There's some rear frame rails. Yeah, you got some work cut out. <laughs> you got some work to do on that, James. <laughs> um, Isaac says, uh, car guy already mentioned. Sorry. Car guy choice, yeah. Uh, Don, Maxim Overdrive, sailboat at the end was the best part. There was a sailboat? Oh. I guess I don't, I don't remember that. Uh, car guy Troy used cars with Kurt Russell. Great show. The 57 Chevy that Jack Warden has a heart attack in was nice, funny movie. Yes. Yeah, that was an entertaining movie. Yeah. Yeah, and the guy couldn't drive the blue cars. Is that right? I think it was blue or red, one of the two. But yep. Terry Keithley, how about Night Shift? Stephen King, All Those Rats. Oh, I don't know about that one. I never saw that one. Uh, Doyle, I saw someone made a replica of the Happy Toys truck with the Green Goblin front. Still creepy. Yeah. Yeah. It, And I think somebody has posted pictures in the past where that, that front end was like laying in a field somewhere. Like they had just taken it off and tossed it, but it was still, was still there. Derek, got to go, guys. Again, all the best to you, Barry, the family, and everyone. Have a great Easter. Same to you, Derek. Thank you. Faith Followers Customs. Barry, have you ever used polyester primer over epoxy? Then filler. Filler tends to sand evenly with the poly. To me, it makes bodywork easier to finish out. Um, you're talking about that, that thick primer? Like the heavy, the heavy stuff? Not really. We use some of that at, uh, at the body shop. They used to call it uh, like the feather fill. Is that what you think? Because they used to call it feather fill and then it had some other name. Is that what you're talking about? Um, we had some issues with that stuff. We were trying to use it on some on some cars and it was bad. We had to redo some stuff. So I don't know if that's what you're referring to, but I have not, I have not used that on anything that I do here. So Harvey checking in. Hello, Barry. Late to the show, but here. Happy Monday. Glad you're here, Harvey. Jerry, good evening from a stormy middle Tennessee. Thumbs up for Barry. Thank you, Jerry. Glad you're here. James Mother's only movie I know with a boat at the end was Shawshank Redemption. Great movie. Great movie. Yep. Rick Stevenson couldn't drive red cars, and they were bad luck. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember. I knew it was red or blue, but they it painted over one of the other colors. Um, so that was that was entertaining. Anthony, another David Carradine movie with Jake, Kate Jackson was Thunder and Lightning. Four door for fifty seven Chevy, actually a pretty good movie. I've never heard of that one. Might have to check it out. Robert never heard of Featherfill being used on steel, used on fiberglass boats a lot though. Yeah, yeah, it was. It used to be called Featherfill, and then they 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 gave it another name. And I, I was thinking it was that polyester stuff, um, but I don't know. I can't remember what the name of it was. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember. Oh, wait, hold on. Cargo Troy never done any body filler work at all. Going to have to eventually when I get to that stage. Would. You use a short strand you speak of versus the Rage stuff. Uh, n no, I would use Rage Ultra to do almost all the body work. I only use short strand in like deep filling areas, like the if I needed to build up a section, um, and it was 
like the roof overlap thing. I would use it, probably use some there, but you don't want to use short strand anywhere else. It's not meant for that. It's meant to be a little tougher so it doesn't crack as easily, let's say, if it were to have some flex in the body or something like that. But yeah, um, just use ultra, uh, Rage Ultra. Slick Sand, yes. That's what we're talking about. Faith Followers Custom. Yep. Feather Fill became Slick Sand. Yep. Jefferson, Barry, do you follow Vice Grip Garage? What do you think of his F100 paint job? I don't follow him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't follow him. So um I haven't I I didn't get into the hype where uh, I think he's the one that like jump starts cars that are sitting in a junkyard and makes a big deal out of it. So I never got into that. Um yeah, I, I don't I don't follow him. Sorry. Rusty, how about the bad movie Corvette Summer? Mm, don't think I've seen that one either. I've heard of it, but I don't think I've seen it. Uh, James Mothers, I watched Urban Cowboy just to see the 60 of Mustang Convertible that character Sissy drove. Oh, okay. Robert Yeh, want to cover the short strand with regular filler to eliminate issues with bleed through and fibers sticking out. Yeah, yeah. Short strand uh, can definitely have like cavities and air pockets and stuff. You want to make sure you get all that out of there and fill it up good. Uh, Rick Gain. Good car movie was Return, Return to Macon County. Yeah, uh, I guess I don't know if I've seen that, but I think I may have heard of that. And then you can think of all the other movies like Gauntlet, you know, all the crazy stuff that they did back then. Michael, short strand filler should be used on welded seams as a water barrier. There you go. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. I like it. And I have to show you something. You know, I, I talked about it on uh, on my Patreon. I posted a video there uh, about some uh, these two items that I'm going to be... Well, I've already made the video, but I have to edit the video to make it work and all that stuff. I've said it before. If I get um, products offered to me, I generally don't accept most of anything. Because I don't, either one, I don't care. I don't want it. I don't need it. You know, if you're going to send me, like I've had companies said, oh, we'll send you some sunglasses. No, I don't want your sunglasses. Or we'll send you a paper towel holder. We want you to do a video. It's like, no, no, I don't want any of that either. Um, hold on, let me answer this question. So, Cargo Troy, so really no place I would use a short strand on the convert that I'm gathering. Makes sense on the roof seam where they used to let in. Pretty sure uh, I follow. Okay, yeah, yes, exactly. Uh, McDLT, have been watching your videos for a long time. I got a 6 by Mustang Coupe, similar to your old Mystique videos. And being a novice welder, I'm extremely intimidated at welding in the new seat riser. That's probably one of the easiest things to weld in, honestly. Yeah, that's probably one of the easiest things to weld in. In fact, I just did a video of welding in a seat riser on the Cobra Jet a couple, three, three or four videos ago. So check that out. James, I should just DIY auto school for all your filler questions. He's very crude personally, but very informative. There you go. Thank you. And McDLT, do you have any tips for a beginner? Thanks, Len. Love the channel. Not really. Um, that's, that's, those seat risers are probably some of the easiest things to weld in. It's nice, thick metal, so easy to get to. I want to show you this, though, before I go any further. I want to show you this. So I had this, this company, and I've been looking to get something like this anyway. Check this out. They sent me this half-inch impact, 21 volts, and 800 foot-pounds of torque is what it says. <laughs> At least break loose torque. So I did a little video on this earlier today, and I put the so a socket on it, <laughs> and I held on to it. That was a bad idea. <laughs> but I got to show you this too. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these things. Check this out. This is a jack. 
this is a jack and this front section here is like an old you know like the old uh, bottle jacks where you can un unthread the center and raise it up this is electric runs off a of 12 volt base plate for the jack and then back here it's got some blinky lights and it's got, actually has a little air compressor built into it as well let me tell you what I put this under my truck under the rear axle one side this thing lifted the back wheel off the ground this little electric is electric motor in here that scopes this out it lifted the back of my truck off the ground I was like okay that's pretty cool so sometimes you just you know you get offers on things and it's <laughs> worth it to get it just to have the tools Um, here you go. James says, take your time and fit, fit, fit first. Yes. That's that makes sure everything lines up. Like I said, seat pans are fairly simple, but you can get them crooked. Um, just look at what you're doing and check out, like I said, the video on the Cobra jet. There's several things on there. Faithful customers. Uh, basically spray filler the only problem I've had with it is force drying it strip the hood twice second was easy it looked like the measles yes yeah that was the stuff um, the, the the slick sand was um, we, we had problems with it we had applied that stuff and later on it popped loose just it, it was just terrible I mean for us it was terrible and I'm sure there's maybe something we did wrong but we followed all the instructions and um yeah i don't i don't use it it might be and i think part of it was we may have done a hood and the hood from flexing or something could have caused a problem doyle question will 2k primer fill pinholes in body filler or do i need to drill a little out and add more filler um yes and no how about that but I normally, what I've done, you can use like a, a glazing putty. You know, if you can see the pinholes, you can use a glazing putty and just scrape it across and let it go into those holes, sand it and get a look at it and see if it's taking care of it. Um, I've also taken Rage and thinned it out some. There's different ways to do that. I have done um, lacquer thinner to thin out body filler and it, it does work I've never had a problem with it but they also sell a honey by like filler honey or something they call it where you can mix it and it'll also make it thinner so you could do something like that as well but you could just use a nice um, spread you know uh, spreader and just go across those holes with it and just back fill them you know I, I don't know if I go so far as to drill out a little but there's different ways to approach that. If you need to, then, you know, you can do that. Uh, Robert, will it lift the RV? You know, I don't know. It's rated between, it says something like five tons, supposedly. Uh, I'm not set up to try it on the RV just yet, right now because it's, I don't have, I, I'm just going to do the video based on what it was intended to do, like, if you put it underneath the side of my little Honda, it would just lift it right up, not even hesitate. Put it under the back of the truck, and you could hear, you know, it had to, it had to work, and it lifted it. It did, it, it did it just fine. So it's pretty, pretty neat little uh, tool. Uh, Cargo Troy, love my Milwaukee Impacts. Don't know how I ever get along without them. You get totally spoiled with that stuff. No air hose is pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I was looking at. Um, with that impact because I've been wanting one of those anyway and I did a test I mean, just real quick I put it on the lug nuts on the trailer and they're pretty rusty and it just boom, it just knocked them right off James says pinholes are filled in with glazing putty prefer Evercoat yep that's that's yep Richard, uh, Richard Vogel, the feather fill cracked on us in the body shop I worked in. It ruined a beautiful lacquer paint job. It's junk. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I've had issues with it. You know, we just quit using it because it was just, it was so risky. C 
GJ on a 60 coupe, would you use a teardrop hood or stay uh, with a stock hood? Oh, that's that's a good question. I like the teardrop hood. You talk about the teardrop scoop that tapers. Yeah, I I kind of like those. I guess it depends on what you're doing with the rest of the car. Like you're gonna put some cool wheels on it and slick paint job, side pipes. <laughs> Put some side pipes on it too, and some big fat tires. No, I I'd actually kind of like that look. Um, I think there's one that I've I've looked at. Let me see if I can find that real quick. There is a uh, car uh, a person I follow on Instagram who has a um, yellow. Um, let me see if I can find it. That yellow 65. I don't know if he has that type of scoop. Oh, he doesn't have that. I th he's got a cowl induction style hood. So, never mind. But I do kind of like the way that looks. But I, I think you need to have all the other, um, you know, good paint job and all that stuff. To make it even better. Obviously, you're going to paint it, right? James says, Slick Sand and Feather Fill has horrible shrinkage. Seen it crack and peel off. Yeah, that's what we were saying. We had issues with that at the shop and just gave up on it. Just not worth having. Not worth having for us. Uh, you know, I've, I've looked at the other, what's the other stuff they sell? Eastwood sells the, like the roll-on primer, I think. Is it Eastwood? I haven't tried that yet. I'd like to try that stuff. You know, it's supposed to roll on instead of spray, and I think it, it, you can roll it on a lot thicker. So it wouldn't be the same as slick sand. It would, it's going to be a primer, but you can make it thick from what I'm gathering. So <clears throat> that's kind of what I want to try that stuff at some point. Um, all right. All right. James says good night. Fellas, stay safe. Yeah, I'm getting close to quitting time on this. Uh, I will bring up that I've had uh, probably 16 or 17 people join me on Patreon, and I want to thank all of you for you know if you're here, thank you for for signing up on Patreon. Um, I encourage you to do that. You know, I've talked about it before. YouTube's terrible, and I've had some um, who were following me. And I don't know if, if things have changed. You know, I, I get it. Sometimes you have to say, I'm not going to, I don't want to do this anymore. And that's fine. I get it. Um, and I, I've had some who were there and then suddenly they're, they're gone. And I don't know if it's a re, the renewal time or it's just, you know, something going on. I don't know. Um, so if you're, if you're, if you're not seeing any updates, if you, if you're trying to continue to follow me on Patreon, but you're not seeing any of the updates or anything, Check your stuff and see if see if you're still there. I guess is what I'm trying to say. So uh, just have a look at that if you're uh, if you're involved. And if you are, again, thank you for that. Um, Rick, I am definitely spoiled with my Milwaukee Impact wrench. I have been looking for a battery powered jack like that. Yeah, this thing. Um, like I said, I'm I'm going to do a video on it, and I guess the company is going to give me either an affiliate link or you know, I can use an Amazon link or something like that. But, um, you know, so I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, you know, the video will be out this week so you can see what it does. Richard says, take care, James. All right. Roger says, night, James. Cargo Troy, that Eastwood roll on epoxy primer looks interesting. I'm thinking about trying that. looks quick and simple. And it, and you don't have to spray, which is a big plus. Richard, love Patreon. Glad to join Barry's Garage Gang. Thank you, Richard. Scott Hebert. Hi, Barry. Is Featherfill the same as High Build Primer? Nope. Completely different. Featherfill is like a, a polyester material. It's almost like sprayable Bondo is kind of how how, you, how I would look at it. But it, it it's almost like it gets harder than body filler or Bondo. Um Primer is paint, so two different two different things, um, and we've had like I said mixed results with 
the feather fill or slick sand. So um, I don't use it. It's just me. Good question, though. Glad you're here, Scott. Jefferson, thanks for your time, Barry. Yes, you're welcome. Don, I can't get my previous Patreon link to the app. Uh, do a free member at this point. Okay. Thank you, Don. Yeah, I'd seen I'd seen you on there, and then it was like, you know, and I and I get it. There's it, it's renewal times and stuff like that. So, um, and I did offer if you're if you're joining. Sorry, it was a bug. If you are wanting to join, there's also a um, like a yearly thing, and you get a discount for that if you want to do the yearly thing. So, uh, just have a look at it. Uh, faith followers, good night all. Take care. Good night. Glad you're here. Robert saying good night. Don. Uh, polyester like gel coat. Um, no, I, I think gel coat is a whole different animal too, but it, it's, it's something you could, you would use on fiberglass and boats and stuff like that. Uh, you can, I don't know. I don't really know the difference between a gel coat and feather fill or whatever. I don't, I don't know what, what the components are. Um, I just know that the, uh, Slick sand or feather fill is a, is a, it's a tough thing to get right. So Rick, I'm much happier to support you on Patreon than the infomercials that air on the motor trend app. Yes. Thank you. I just don't want to lose anybody. You know, if you're here, great. And if you, if you can't, I understand that too. I'm not, I just don't want somebody to inadvertently like skip out. Car guy, Troy night folks. Thanks Barry. Have a great week. Yes. Thank you as well. Okay. All right, that is uh, that's close enough to an hour and a half that I'm probably going to have to go. I'm getting hungry, and um, we've had a good uh, a good conversation. I know we talked some about car parts, we talked about movies, which is all good. <laughs> Can't complain about any of that. Um, oh, let's see, Dave Conwell, good in, good night. See you on Patreon soon. By the way, Jack W making some nice progress on his 66. Good. I need some updates on that. CNJ, I think you'll like the artistic when you get it up and rolling. Yes, I think so too. Uh, okay, so with all that said, um, I do plan to be back next Monday at 7 o'clock as well. And I, I welcome you to that event. <laughs> Bring your questions uh, and we'll sit down and have a talk. And that'll be it. So until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya. <laughs>